dear friend from uh, uh, around the, the world, good morning, good uh, afternoon or evening, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome to our very first uh, program of this uh, new channel called uh, JJMB Congo Africa Monde, or as uh, English people would say, uh, JJMB Congo Africa World a channel where we'll be sharing with you our thoughts on matters affecting Africa, particularly the Democratic Republic of Congo where we come from, and why not from time to time the world uh, since it has become a village, uh, a, a small village, uh, because notably of the extraordinary evolution in technology, uh, whatever is happening in any part uh, of uh, the planet, uh, be it in Mali, Burkina Faso, DRC, Nigeria, Morocco, Zimbabwe, or Zambia, South Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Botswana, Swaziland, Iceland, or China, to name just a few countries of the village will affect uh, all of us in one way or the other and the uh, uh, cases uh, uh, between uh, uh, of the war between Russia and Ukraine or the killings uh, in the eastern part of the DRC by the terrorist group uh, M23 uh, backed uh, by Rwanda as per uh, UN uh, uh, investigation are good examples of that. The subject we have for you today is the issue of the exploitation of new oil and uh, gas uh, deposits in Africa and we'll uh, particularly talk uh, uh, about the case of the Democratic Republic of Congo which is in the media headlines for having put on the market the exploration offer of around 20 oil uh, blocks and uh, a few gas blocks. According to some organization concerned about uh, the effect uh, of uh, all uh, of these activities either on global warming or uh, biodiversity, such as uh, Greenpeace, uh, they've accused the DRC of not uh, respecting the international commitment made in this field uh, during the uh, COP. For this organization, uh, the Congo should decommission the block uh, which are in sensitive areas particularly in the forests of the Congo Basin and in the protected areas of uh, uh, the Virunga Park. For its part, the Congolese government accuses that the promised compensation fund do not uh, follow and uh, also replies that the, the terms of these commitments do not prevent certain activities related to the development. We'll get to all of that in a moment and give you our perspective on this issue in hopes that we can diffuse the debate. We are broadcasting from Johannesburg, the economic capital of South Africa, where today the weather is uh, splendid with the return of the rains and after the hot days that we have known for the past uh, three weeks. I am your host, Jean-Jacques Bukasa. For you Fakan viewers who would like to follow this program in French, we'll leave a link in the description uh, below. Or you could uh, simply subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and then browse the list of uh, videos in French. Pour vous de nos aimables téléspectateurs qui aimeriez suivre cette émission en français, nous allons laisser un lien dans la description de cette vidéo où euh, vous pourriez tout simplement souscrire à la chaîne si vous ne l'avez pas encore fait et ensuite parcourir la liste des vidéos en français. We are going to start uh, uh, by presenting this great uh, African country to you in the smallest uh, details uh, because to fully understand its position in the face of a problem is necessary to establish the context in which we found ourselves. Uh, it will be long but uh, important to do. Please follow. The Democratic Republic of Congo is a country in Central Africa. It is the third most uh, populous uh, country in Africa uh, behind uh, Nigeria and Ethiopia. 
as well as uh, the most populous French-speaking country. The DRC is the second largest uh, country in Africa after Algeria. It uh, stretches from the Atlantic Ocean to the Eastern Plateau and corresponds to uh, the most of the Congo River Basin. The north of the country is one of the largest uh, areas of the equatorial forest in the world. The east of uh, the country borders the great uh, East uh, African Rift, a domain of mountains, hills, the great uh, lakes, uh, but uh, also uh, volcanoes. The south and the center, a domain of uh, wooded uh, savannas, uh, form a high plateau rich uh, in uh, minerals. In the far west, about 30 kilometers north of uh, the mouth of the Congo River, stretches the coast of uh, the Atlantic Ocean. The country shares its borders with the enclave of uh, Cabinda, Angola to the west-southwest, uh, the Republic of Congo to the west, uh, the Central African Republic to the north, South uh, Sudan to the north-east, uh, Uganda to the east-northeast, Rwanda and Burundi to the east, Tanzania to the east-southeast, uh, Zambia to the southeast and Angola to the southwest. The DRC has been a member of the International Organization for La Francophonie since uh, 1977. The territory became the private property of uh, Belgian King Leopold II in uh, 1885. Over the next uh, 23 years, the territory was the site of uh, widespread atrocities committed by Leopold's colonial forces who forced the indigenous uh, population to produce wild uh, rubber and then uh, it became a Belgian colony uh, to uh, the country gained, uh, gained its independence in 1960 and was immediately confronted with a series of uh, cessation movement uh, which culminated in Mobutu seizures of uh, power in 1965. Mobutu renamed the country Zaire in 1971 and presided over a fixed, di uh, fierce dictatorship until it overthrew his overthrow in 1997 by the First uh, Congo War. Then the country old name was restored and the country faced the Second uh, Congo War in 1998 the deadliest since World War II. It ended in 2003 and uh, the uh, presidency of Joseph Kabila, who governed uh, the country until 2019. The current president of the country is Felix uh, Chisekedi, who succeeded Kabila following the 2018 presidential election, the country's first peaceful transition since independence. Good. We have just had a pretty uh, clear look at the country in the news headlines around the world for uh, the exploration of, uh, of around 20 oil and gas blocks on the market and now we are getting right into it. The UN Secretary General has repeatedly called for fossil fuel addiction to end at the COP27. He clarified that emerging economies are also key to bending the curve of uh, global emission. Here, it should uh, be noted that he's talking about a common future and the future of our children, which he links to that of the planet. This is all good, but the relevant question I allow myself to ask is that when we talk about the future, do we have the same apprehension, the same appreciation, the same hope, the same excitement for it. Are those who talk about saving the planet, the future of our children, sure that everyone counts in this vision? 
And in the same vein, is it that by becoming aware of the miserable situations today that have lasted for many uh, years since the dawn of time, do many oppressed people have resolved that uh, this future is so important that they can have even sacrifice themselves to reach it? Are we seeing and talking about the same future? If not, then what would their feelings be to see themselves now are asked for a future where they are told that better two than one now you have it when all they've seen so far is what one can become when one is never counted in the plans made by the strongest at the risk of an, of being exterminated when one stands between the interests for the survival and as well as the extravagances which are numerous and insatiable for a young woman in the Eastern DRC who gives birth to two twins like these in, a, in traumatic conditions and while she bears the wounds of a world that she has lived through for more than 20 years now, as we all have seen on TV, a world that is not of her doing and uh, ironically inflicted on her by the same polluting multinationals using some proxies of African leaders ready to sacrifice their brothers and children for a little bit of uh, honey. Do you think this woman understands the future as we paint it? Or does she believe the distant future exists? Don't you think her future is in the moment? And she is satisfied and I must suggest to have also produced two lives, two alike, without any wishes or plan for the future? For the parents or grandparents who perished among the 10 million Congolese under the cruelty of King Leopold II, did they have any idea that the future of their children left behind was still going to be more massacres and other such serious abuses despite the evolution of, of modern thought, such as the Congolese genocide perpetrated by Kagame's army in which 10 million others of their children fell and this stupidity to continue until today. The Congo has thus known since colonization until today, if these are not plots, massacres, and assassinations, there are subtle schemes coming from afar to ensure systematic theft of its resources for foreign capitals. What future or what uh, planet are we talking about? We would even be tempted in extreme ways to say why would a large category of oppressed people seek to save a planet that brings them nothing but hardship. But that would be just to draw attention to the fact that we must be sure that we are talking about the same thing and that otherwise the rich countries are well prepared to also pay the enormous price that is asked of others so that order and peace are repaid because this planet is well worth to be saved and that even without us still alive, it will still regenerate even if it will take billions of years. We therefore have a choice to make. Behave like humans among ourselves by sharing fairly what we have already taken too much from this planet and, that, and let it breathe for a long time or disappear all. Because as we have already felt with what already appears to be like a reversal of the situation with everything that is happening today with the climatic damage on the other end, wherever we are, and on the other, the abundance of ideal resources to save the planet, being in countries either to minimize. Yes, God has his way of intervening and he will always intervene to restore order it's far from me that people think that I'm opposed to, I'm opposed to what the UN Secretary General is saying and which is what many of us also believe should be done, but demand the right conditions. Rich nations and multinationals should not try to get away with confusing and proposing crimes so as not to return half of the hundreds of trillions of dollars of budget which they've taken from the planet 
and which should be directed towards the green development of the poor countries to avoid threatening it more but bringing a balance. They've chosen to protect their own future which does not exist for an entire family dying the day after from lack and who in the meantime are offered to simply contemplate the abundant resources so that everyone can enjoy the free air and its sacrifice. Good. Let's go on, but uh, before doing so, let's take a moment to talk about the great solidarity campaign initiated by the Congolese government to bring humanitarian aid to its population in the East and elsewhere in the country who are scared by wars and conflict and justly imposed on them by terrorist countries and economic organizations angry for free minerals. As we follow every day in the media around the world, the suffering of these men and women and also children is beyond description and it has been going on for 25 years now. Not to mention the last go, uh, mountain gorillas in the world already in full extinction and other animals, some also rare, which are caught in the lands of shell fire. This contribution campaign is also to help the Congolese army have the means to take over and finally ensure that peace returns forever and that these beings are protected. Dear Congolese compatriots, the Africans and world friends, let us contribute massively to say that we no longer want this kind of spectacle and suffering inflicted on human beings and animals in this world, wherever they are, and it starts with our gesture today. You will find in the description the link to a video which gives you all the details on the necessary means of uh, payment. Do it now before it's too late or you forget it. And then, and thank you for your contribution. Please stay tuned, we'll be with you in a moment. Let's get back to our topic of uh, the day, which speaks just as well to the reason for this campaign by the DRC government. We were saying earlier that if people who face poverty every day and wars of all kinds because of their resources, people who have a life expectancy for the newborn being determined in numbers of day and month, and who test every day the result of selfishness and abuses of the rich countries towards them and do not have the same excitement in front of the safeguard of the planet and the future they propose. So what are we doing, what are we saying when for them the future is now or just the next few days and tomorrow will take care of itself? It is interesting to see that when poor Africans and other victims of the abuses of the rich countries in the country of origins cross the Mediterranean Sea towards the horizons where all the wealth thrown from the countries is concentrated, with, with what it has produced as comfort and often with their work, and that uh, they are being asked to return where they came from, 
so as not to destabilize the comfortable way of life, I tell myself that something is wrong here. If you want to stop abusing the earth's resources and do things well. Because the logic should be to share what we already have taken from too much of this earth, no matter what, and let it breathe for a long time, don't you think? On the contrary, some rich countries contribute, continue to choose awkwardly to go down the road of uh, intimidation to protect their gains. The recent decision by the European Union not to import cacao, coffee, cooking oil and other products from the forested areas in, is a good example of this and is very fresh. One might think that this decision is positive because it helps to discourage for deforestation and the climate. But in reality, it is extraordinarily unfair because it eats even more the developing countries where this forest are found. In so far as we put the cart before the horse, that is to say without first having solved the problem of the survival, but the equivalent compensation coming with the same speed as these kind of decisions are taken. Living like that, millions of people without a source of income and exposing them to certain death. No wealthy country should not seek to evade their responsibility to earn over much of their wealth and should avoid creating confusion. The solution to climate and biodiversity conservation problems is as simple as asking a child who has ordered all the sweets to also give some to his little brother to avoid opening the second box reserved for another day. And especially that by gorging himself on all this quantity, he will end up dying on one day from obesity. What to say now when this child starts reminding his brother while he has everything in hand and drooling like everything that mom said not to touch the other box which should rather be left for later. Yet this is what the European Union has just done. Not thinking at all of others, but of itself, of its own future, and of its own survival. The problem that the world has is therefore a problem of selfishness. And the solution is that the rich countries put on the table all the wealth that they've accumulated in abusive ways on the back of the planet and the, and the poor countries and that new sharing meant to restore the balance of positive habits done according to the green development needs of all countries but all in all the objective will be to bring everyone back to a level playing field and concessions will have to be done this is the price of the vision of a common future where everyone must be counted a world without geopolitics without selfishness without conflicts and where we work for the good of everyone and the planet. We are therefore talking about a movement of funds in terms of trillions of dollars, a planetary Marshall Plan and now, a revolution and not the crumbs envisaged with actions at a snail's pace. While waiting for the rich countries and the multinationals which are lagging beyond to decide to come to terms with these, the developing countries are well within their right to exploit these resources which can save their economies and relieve their population in a world still divided because for them, as long as everything remains equal to the past, then life is today and tomorrow will take care of itself. Please stay tuned, we'll be with you in a moment.
environmental defense organization like uh, Greenpeace must therefore be very careful not to get the wrong target even though they are warning about the damage in the field which we appreciate. As we have just seen, the ball is in the coat of the African countries and the energies must rather be concentrated on ensuring that they honor the bill in trillions and not on giving them crutches which allow them to escape their responsibilities by taking decisions that put the cart before the oath as the European Union has done. The Democratic Republic of Congo, to cite only its example among all developing countries, faces millions of inhabitants living on less than $2 a day, despite being very rich in natural resources, particularly wood and oil, and these resources should not just be there to be contemplated so that the rich countries, which have empty days or have no none can continue to maintain the extravagances without any compensation. Indeed, by capturing the bulk of the carbon dioxide emitted by the world into the atmosphere to its forest, the DRC alone would contribute to the world every 20 years $1 trillion that is, it misses to earn from the exploitation of its vast oil and timber reserves. That is an enormous sacrifice by its population, which dies by the thousand, a day for luck, by wars, conspiracies, and conflicts strangely imposed by the same people and organization which today, for obvious reasons, are obliged to speak aloud to add the real problem instead proposing to the Congo and other countries not to touch the forest when they've always been there in the dark, acting with and Catholic methods. As long as the Congo has its heavy burden on the survival of its population, and as long as the rich countries drag their feet, the Congo will have to decide alone on its forest and find the balance between the management of the forest and its needs as it sees fit. The moment, and perhaps so as not to offend sensibilities too much, do it with tact, which it already does well when thinking about modern technologies used in advanced countries and which do not affect the environment as much. But the attitude of the European Union is not likely to improve the posture of Western countries if, instead of fulfilling its moral and material responsibility, it chooses the path of intimidation. If we go this field, I would like its member to reflect on this. Even if the Congo is asphyxiated in all areas of exploitation of its resources, and this also goes for all Africa, and that it consequently decides to no longer give them to the world, including its strategic minerals, it will survive, and perhaps better than ever envisaged, and it will rather be the world that will lose because, have you ever imagined what would the Congo be if it uses all its oil, for example, for its own in internal energy needs, and its cost was almost zero for its population and other internal consumers? The positive impact this would have on all other activities in the country would be enormous. And then, being surrounded by forests, the impact of carbon dioxide on its population will be nil. The few friends in the world that it will still keep around it will be enough for the little exchange necessary to acquire the technology for its production and other essential goods and services. When the basic needs of its population are like that well covered internally, what would then be the point of having plenty of foreign currency and other luxuries? On good terms, hello. Please stay tuned, we'll be with you in a moment.
In conclusion, NGOs and rich countries must have a fairer attitude concerning the problem of oil exploitation in the DRC or Africa in the face of climate change and the protection of its environment. The global budget of all the countries of the world is approximately $100,000 billion dollars and 1% of this budget that each country could support for its bad from its budget, or even more the polluting countries, is equal to $1,000 billion, equivalent more or less to what the Congo needs not to be the only one to sacrifice itself for the world. This is the real equation to be solved by NGOs and the world, and not playing with emotions, This equation could thus be applied for any developing country which would be hindered in this exercise in the face of its resources. And since each country to different degrees, according to its level of pollution, would contribute a percentage of its budget to the victim countries, the rich up to 50% of the budget, everything balances and the difference is what these countries will really deserve. Now the world, you know it, and here I am speaking more to the population of rich countries because you have certainly understood that we are not talking about the same thing when we talk about the future of the planet because we on the other side have well long learned to dance every day with death, to live from day to day as if these days was the last and less attitude change for the good for all. The price to save this planet is around 50 trillion dollars. Yes, you heard it, 50 trillion dollars, or more than an half of the wealth of uh, rich countries that they must return to the poor ones for the green development so as not to bleed the earth even more and eat it up. And not the one thousandth or 50 billion that they've recently proposed at COP15. That's the price of a common future. Now world, you will know who to blame if the earth become unlivable. Well, We have come to the end of uh, this program. Thank you for having been with us. Give us a thumb up if you liked it. Subscribe and share if you want to stay tuned for our next uh, interesting issues. Looking for, forward to being with many of you again soon. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye for now. Stay tuned for our advertising page. One address only, copier laptop cartridge essentials PTY limited at www.clcessentials.co.za Only one address for all you need for office machines and machine accessories parts and consumables like uh, personal computers, laptop, high or low volume multifunction printers, inks and toners, batteries, memory cards, hard drives, keyboards, laptops parts, printers parts, screens, laptops bags and so on.